This is part two of our look at Appendix F of the on-site guide, an often underused appendix full of very useful information. We are working to Amendment 2 of the Wine Regulations, the Brown Book, and all page numbers refer to the Brown Amendment 2 on-site guide. Over time, we've had lots of questions about voltage drop. What is voltage drop, for instance? Where do we start with the formula? And can we have some examples to help us understand? How does the formula work? And even, why does it matter about voltage drop? How does it affect the circuit? A cable is just a cable, isn't it? We will use a basic cooker circuit to show you voltage drop and its effects on the circuit. The cooker here has a line from the consumer unit to the cooker and a return path along the neutral. There will also be an earth or CPC, but we do not take this into account for voltage drop calculations. The same circuit can be shown as one long string as shown at the bottom. The calculations will be based on DC resistances. The difference in AC impedances is very small at 50 Hz. And for most of the calculations, we will use 240 volts, as it often makes calculations easier. For some examples, we will use the 230 volt nominal voltage as per the regulations. The cable resistances can be represented as resistors, one for line, one for neutral. The cooker ring is shown as on, so the circuit sees a resistance which can also be shown as a resistor. And 50 ohms, as used in our examples, is typical for a cooker ring. Let's begin by looking at what happens in the circuit if we use high resistance cables. How does the cable resistance affect things? We've made the cable resistances very high just to illustrate what is happening in a bad circuit. The 50 ohm cooker ring or element is connected to the consumer unit by a 5 ohm line conductor and a 5 ohm neutral conductor. Nearly 20% of the circuit resistance is in the cables. And this is our simplified cooker circuit. So let's make some basic Ohm's law calculations on it and see what happens in the circuit. This table shows the calculations that we've made. The current flowing through each part is the same at 4 amps. And we can now work out the voltage drop in the cables and across the cooker. Each conductor has a volts drop of 20 volts, 40 volts in total, leaving just 200 volts available at the cooker. This means that the cooker ring can only produce 800 watts of power, with 80 watts lost in each of the cables, just heating up the walls. The customer is paying for 960 watts of energy, but only actually getting 800 watts of useful power. What happens if we turn on the second ring? Will things improve or get worse? With two cooker rings turned on, this will effectively put two 50 ohm resistances in parallel. The top circuit is the same electrically as the bottom circuit. Ohm's law tells us that two 50 ohm resistances in parallel have a combined resistance of 25 ohms. The cables have stayed the same at 5 ohms and now make up more than 28% of the circuit resistance. This is going to have a profound effect on the power in the circuit. The table shows that we have a much worse situation. There is a 35 volt drop in the line and neutral conductors and only 171 volts is available at the cooker. Line plus neutral loses 470 watts of power and the customer is paying for this lost energy. Only 1176 watts of power is produced between the two cooker rings. This is not the 2 times 800 watts or 1600 watts that you might expect from the previous example, as each ring is producing less than 600 watts of usable power. Now we decide to install lower resistance cables, closer to what we would find in real life. What differences is this going to make? This is the same cooker with the same two cooker rings turned on. Now. We've made the line and neutral cables just 0.5 ohms in resistance. The two cables 
are now significantly smaller than the resistances of the cooker rings. Together, they make up less than 4% of the total circuit resistance. Here is our effective circuit shown at the bottom. Two 50 ohm resistors in parallel making a 25 ohm resistance. And this is the table of values. Pause the video and take a moment to study it. You will notice a lot of beneficial changes. So let's compare results for the two circuits. Pause the video and look at the differences. This is the same cooker settings with two rings turned on, just different cable resistances. Before, we had 35 volts lost in the cable. Now, it is less than 5 volts. Before, we had just 170 volts at the cooker. Now, the cooker has 230 volts available. And the power has jumped to a massive 2,130 watts at the cooker. Almost all the power in the circuit is at the cooker rings, the elements, just where it should be. This is a much more efficient use of the power available. Lower cable resistances make for smaller voltage drops and more efficient circuits. So let's get down to business and look at some examples of voltage drop calculations using Appendix F of the on-site guide. What does the on-site guide say about voltage drop? Well, not a lot really, just one paragraph. It gives you the formula and the limits and that's about it. But no explanations or examples. Take a look at the voltage drop section of Appendix F on page 168. The limits are given as percentages. So the table we've shown you here lists what this translates to as real voltages based on a 230 volt nominal voltage. In the formula shown here, voltage drop is the actual volts drop in the cables. We then compare this to the maximum permitted voltage drop shown in the previous table. But how do we know which voltage drop we are talking about, actual or maximum? To avoid errors, I use VDACT for the actual to differentiate from VD max, the permitted maximum. We want VD actual to be not more than VD max. Actual volts drop should be equal to or less than the permitted maximum. So this is the formula that we will be using. The next question is, what do all the symbols mean? Not understanding the formula is often what makes people avoid using the formula. So let's put that right. Starting on the left, at the nine o'clock position, we have the actual voltage drop that we are going to calculate for this circuit. Working clockwise, the equation itself begins with the blue box. Millivolts per amp per meter. How many millivolts the cable loses for every amp that flows through every meter of the conductors? Next, we have IB, the design current, and then L for the length of the circuit. And we convert millivolts back to volts by dividing by 1000. This table breaks down each of these steps. Millivolts per amp per meter multiplied by IB and multiplied by the length, then all divided by 1000. Pause the video and follow the steps. The millivolts per amp per meter is a number specific to a certain size of conductor. Take a look at table F6 on page 177 and see the numbers in the rightmost column. The bigger the cable size, the less millivolts that are lost in the cable. We simply choose a cable size on the left and then look up the MVAM number on the right. IB is the design current, the number of amps that the appliance was designed to use. A 13 amp kettle has an IB of 13 amps. When it's switched on, it will try to draw 13 amps. Some circuits have varying loads or appliances that have changed, different sized light bulbs being changed. It may be easier to use the circuit breaker rating as the IB. This method will always give the worst case volts drop, but will never give an undersized cable. Look on the rating plate for the current or the watts. Length is simply the meters from the consumer unit to the cooker. 
The length of this cooker circuit is 20 meters. We only measure one way. It is not 40 meters. We do not measure it there and back. The number 1000 matters. The MVAM number is the voltage lost in the cable given in millivolts. That is, millivolts per amp per meter. But the maximum permitted voltage drop is given in volts. We need to convert from millivolts to volts to compare numbers correctly. And we do this by dividing our answer by 1000. Shown here, our answer is 6930 millivolts. Divide this by 1000 to get 6.93 volts. Let's have some word examples now to reinforce our understanding. Most books will give this formula using just VD, but it's easy to become confused. Are we dealing with the actual volts drop or the maximum volts drop? As I mentioned before, I avoid this by using VD ACT to show that this is the actual volts drop of the circuit and not the maximum permitted volts drop. Question 1 asks us to find the actual volts drop for a single phase shower circuit wired in 10 mm flat profile cable or twin and earth. If the length of the circuit is 25 meters and the shower current is 39 amps. If the maximum permitted voltage drop is 11.5 volts, does the circuit conform to regulations? I always make a small chart or list of the information that I need to know before I can answer the question. And we need to know three things here. Table F6 on page 177 will give us the millivolts per amp per meter. We are using 10 millimeter cable. Find this on the left and then move to the rightmost column and find 4.4. That is the MVAM number for 10 millimeter copper conductor. IB and the length are given in the question. And the rest is easy now. Put the numbers into the formula as shown and out pops the answer 4.29. The actual volts drop is 4.29 volts and conforms to regulations, as this is below the maximum permitted voltage drop of 11.5 volts. Next question then, and this time we will need to find the amps from the watts. Here's the question. Find the actual volts drop for a radial cooker circuit wired in 6mm flat profile cable to an earth if the length of the circuit is 30 meters and the rated power of the cooker at 230 volts is 6600 watts. If the maximum permitted voltage drop is 11.5 volts, does the circuit conform to the regulations? Again, start with a list of what you need to know. Go to table F6 again and find the millivolts per amp per meter. For 6 millimeter cable, this is 7.3. Now find IB from the watts that are given in the question. The question gives the watts as 6600 and specifies the voltage as 230 volts. 6600 divided by 230 is 28.6956 and we can round up to 28.7. Therefore, IB is 28.7 amps. We now have all three variables that we need for the calculation. All we need to do now is to put the numbers into a calculator. Entering the data, we have 6,285 divided by 1,000, which is 6.285. And we can round this up to 6.3 volts as an actual voltage drop. Again, this is below 11.5 volts and is an acceptable voltage drop. Let's do another question. This time, we have a water heater circuit that is wired in 2.5 mm flat profile cable. The length of the circuit is 50 meters and the water heater is rated at 13.5 amps at 230 volts. We must calculate the voltage drop and decide if this conforms to the regulations. Off to page 177 again, table F6, where we find that 2.5 twin earth cable has an MBAM of 18. As before, complete the list of what we need to know 
before making the calculation. Put the numbers into the calculator and we have an actual voltage drop of 12.15 volts, clearly over the maximum voltage drop limit for this circuit. What can we do? That was 2.5 mm cable. Let's try again with 4 mm cable. Just follow the same process. Start by finding the number for 4 mm cable on page 177. The MVAM for 4 mm cable is 11. And we already have the other two variables. Back to the calculator, and this time our answer comes out at 7.43 volts actual voltage drop. So we should use 4 mm cable as this gives an acceptable voltage drop. We sometimes need to calculate the maximum length that a cable run can go to with a given design current IB and a given size cable without exceeding the volts drop requirements. We will need to rearrange the formula to find the maximum length of a cable that does not exceed the permitted maximum voltage drop and now we will use VD max, VD maximum. Let's look at the symbols involved. VD max times 1000 goes on the top and millivolts per amp per meter multiplied by IB goes on the bottom. Question 4 asks us to calculate the maximum length of cable that can be installed without exceeding the permitted voltage drop of 11.5 volts for a single phase 30 amp cooker circuit using 6 mm flat profile twin and earth cable. Make a list of what we need to know. Page 177 gives the value to use for 6 mm cable as 7.3. And our completed list looks like this. Entering the numbers into a calculator, we have 11,500 divided by 219. This gives us 52.51, and rounding our answer, we have 52.5 metres as a maximum length. A few notes as a recap on what we've talked about. Most books will simply use VD. Make sure that you know which VD you're using. I like to differentiate them as VD actual and VD maximum. Actual volts drop, VD actual, should not exceed the maximum permitted voltage drop, VD max, shown in the regulations. This is 6.9 volts for lighting circuits or 11.5 volts for all other circuits. If the appliance power is shown in watts or kilowatts, convert this to amps before using in the formula. By rearranging the formula, we can calculate the maximum length of a particular cable. The voltage drop formula does not take into account other factors that may affect the cable. And lastly, one of the most important things to remember is how cable size and cable length affect voltage drop. Smaller size cables, or those of longer length, will have a bigger voltage drop. The lower that we can make the resistance of the cables, the lower that the volts drop will be. And if you want to reduce the voltage drop, choose a bigger size cable, say switch from 2.5 mm cable to a 4 mm cable. And keeping the length as short as possible also reduces the voltage drop. That's it. Hopefully you've added to your understanding of voltage drop and can now calculate volts drop as required. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. And we hope that you found this video useful and informative. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.